Hi, welcome to What Circuit. This is the second video in a series of tutorials on LED lighting drivers. In the first video we talked about selecting components. We also discussed the IC that we wanted to use. Now we've chosen the Texas Instruments LM3409. The reason we chose that is because it comes in a dip package. Now we did that so that we could use it to prototype on a solderless breadboard like this one over here. Now we're going to show you how to effectively prototype using a breadboard. A breadboard adds resistance, capacitance and inductance to your circuit. Now I'll show you where and how. So between the tracks you, you get capacitance and along the tracks you get inductance. You also get resistance added so between the joint between the board connections and your wire and then you have resistance added along the wire and again for the next connection. Now, if you want more information on this, have a look at Dave Jones's EV blog video. This is a schematic of the circuit that we have built on the breadboard. It is a typical application shown in the datasheet for the LM3409 to which we have added an output capacitor. Here we can see the main high current path going from the supply through the FETs and onto the LEDs. A point to note is the ground return which is not shown in the schematic but is also part of the high current path. When the FET is off, current flows through the diode adding it to the high current path as well. Current sense resistor is low value therefore we must ensure extra resistance is not added in the layout. This is a good place to use the Kelvin or four wire connection technique. This is the main power supply to the IC. The current through this connection will be lower than the current through the LED, but it will be pulsed, so inductance will cause a voltage drop. If we keep the capacitor C in near the IC pin, this will compensate for any stray inductance. This is the main sense connection. This is less sensitive than the circuitry we've covered already, but we will try and keep this short. This is the under voltage lockout. Particularly as we are running from a mains power supply, this connection really isn't sensitive and so we'll run this towards the end. The enable pin is a digital input. This can be a longer connection and will be the last connection made. Now that we've identified the high current loops on the schematic, let's take a look at this on the breadboard. Now you can see that the current goes in here to the IC which is really keeping the distance really really short. All the other key components like the sense resistor, the FET, the inductor, the di diode, they're all really really short distances. There may be some components which have leads which are too large to insert into the breadboard without damaging it permanently. Here is an example of one. You'll have to solder smaller leads so that you can insert it into the breadboard. You can see that most of the components that we're using on our on prototype here are through hole. The exception to that is the FET that we're using down here which is a surface mount component. Now in order to use a surface mount component we use something called a breakout board. What this allows you to do is to attach your surface mount component here and then breaks it out to all these pins at the bottom. This allows you to use it on the breadboard. Now, one thing to note is that when you're attaching your pins, use the breadboard so that you can align them so that they fit perfectly onto the breadboard. Another thing we highly recommend is that you label the pins so that you don't forget what they are. We recommend you take some basic ESD protection when you're handling components like the FETs and the IC. You can see that we've added a capacitor at V in. The reason for this is to compensate for any straight inductances that may be in any wise leading up to it. Now, on a schematic, you may be able to put this 
anywhere, but we recommend putting it as close to the IC as possible. This means that VIN will get a smooth input. Let's take a look at the performance of this prototype. We're going to do this by looking at the efficiency. Now, on the input, we used a multimeter that's capable of taking power measurements, and on the output, we used a power meter. According to the data sheet, the maximum efficiency possible under these conditions is 92%. Have a look at this messy layout that we've got here. We managed to get 79% efficiency under these conditions. This may not sound bad, but some ICs will not work under these conditions at all. Now, if you look over here next to it, in this cleaner layout, we managed to get 90.5% efficiency. This is really good for prototyping. This means that we have a lot of confidence in the design that we've just got here. In the next video, we're going to show you how to get from a prototype like this to a blank PCB and then to a populated one. We're also going to do some more measurements, both the power efficiency and also lux measurements on, along the table. If you have any comments, you can leave them down below. Also, if you liked our video, we'd appreciate a thumbs up. Until then, see you next time.